Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial session on bioinformatics. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can build a file genetic tree based on gen sequences. And I'll demonstrate using the gen RPOB. Now before we proceed, let me chip in that you can find me on the various social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Now, this tutorial will follow this outline. I'll first give the importance of phylogenetic trees. I'll give just a few of them. And I'm also going to list the tools that will be used for this tutorial. You also get to know the requirements your PC needs to satisfy in order to follow and reproduce this tutorial. And then we shift to the practical session. Now, Phylogenetic trees are important for the study of living organisms in that they enable us to understand how genes and genomes of organisms evolved. In addition, phylogenetic trees enable us to study the diversity of genes and genomes in organisms. Now, the tools we are going to use for this tutorial are Python and then the Python library BioPython. We are also going to use Muscle, Fimel, and then ITOR, the interactive tree of life. Now, for you to follow this tutorial, you need to have this requirement. Your PC should be Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. Please note that this tutorial uses a Linux environment, but the tools have versions for Windows and Mac OS, so you can also follow that as well. You also need to have pip installed and then python pip is used to install python library so please get that installed as well you also need to have an internet browser we are going to use this in the later stages of the analysis now for the practical session this is how it's going to be we are first going to do the data acquisition where we download the genomes for six strains of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. Then we are going to set up the analysis environment. Please note that in terms of the genome downloads, we are going to use the GenBank format. I'll show you that later on. We are going to set up the analysis environment, which involve the installation of the tools that will be used. We are going to extract the IPOP gene sequence from the genomes we have downloaded. Now this procedure, I thought it wise to introduce it because sometimes you might have access to the complete genome sequences, but not the individual gene sequences. So you need to have some ways of extracting that or those sequences from your genomes. We will use BioPython, which is a Python library for it. We are going to combine these extracted gene sequences into a single multi faster file and then perform a sequence alignment on that. The tool muscle will help us do that. We then estimate the maximum likelihood phylogeny using the tool FIMEL. And then the phylogenetic tree that will be generated by FIMEL will now be uploaded to the ITOL server and then it will render it to an image which we can download and view. And finally, we interpret the tree. So now that we are done with the introductions, let the analysis begin. The next thing to do is to download the genomes for each of the strains. We will download the genomes from the NCBI database. And I'm going to leave the links in the description box so that you can use that to also download them. We will begin with the first strain, which is NCTC8325. That is also the reference genome for staph aureus. And this is the page. So to download the genome, which will be in the GenBank format, we come to send to here click on it 
make sure complete record is checked. Then when you come to choose destination, you check file. When you come to the format, select Stimbank 4. Then you create the file. Depending on the settings of your browser, the file will automatically be downloaded. If it happens that way, you make sure you rename the file because a default name will be given to it. In my case, I'll be asked to save it. And that will give me the opportunity to name it before saving. So let me do it. I'll save it on my desktop. The default is sequence.gb, but I will name it as nctc. Ace325 NCTC. Ace325. Okay, based on the names that I displayed. Please note that in your file names, do not include space characters. Some programs do not work well with files with space characters. So if you want to use a space character, then I suggest you use an underscore as I've done here. Now we save it. After that, we download the remaining five strings. Please use the same procedure to download the five other strings as well. After a successful download, these are my GenBank files. You are supposed to have six of them, so please check. I would like to organize my files a bit better, so I'll place all of them in another directory or folder. I'll create a new directory called Sequences. and then place the files in them. So there I have it, it's organized. Now let's go to the terminal and continue the rest from there. We will explore the downloaded data and then install the tools and software. So this is my terminal. I will first cd to my home directory. And then check the files. I saved it on my desktop here. So I will see ls desktop. So this is the directory. To get access to all the files, I will see ls desktop slash sequences so i have all of them there there are six of them if you have more than six in other data sets you can also check how many there are by saying ls desktop slash sequences then you use the pipe command and see wc that's L. So we have six of them, which is fine. It's now time to install the tools. So this is how you set up the analysis environment. For BioPython, you install using pip. And the command for installing is here, so please do that. For the muscle and then final tools, you need to download their respective binary files, extract the contents, and then set a path to the executable files. 
I'm going to leave a link in the description box so that I can use those links to download the binary files. I also have video tutorials for this entire procedure so you can watch them to set up the analysis environment. There's a video tutorial for how to install libraries using pip. There's a, there are tutorials also for muscle and final installation. So please do that. After you are done with that, you proceed with the next activity. The next thing is to download a Python script on my GitHub page called the IPU Virginia Extractor. This script will be used to extract the IPU Virgin sequence from the GenBank file. So on my GitHub page, this is the file that you need to download. Okay, so please try and then download it. So to download, I click on it. Then on the next page, I click on raw. Then on this page, I right click and then save pages. I will still save it on my desktop with the same name. So that is done. Now let's move to the terminal. Before you even go to the terminal, let's look at the script. So this is the script over there. Okay, so let's go to the terminal now. Now, if you have installed all the tools using the instructions I've provided in the description box, then you need to have opened a new terminal. And then we can even test as well. If you follow the exact same instructions, then you should have the apps directory here. And then in the app directory, when you do the ls apps, you find your files there, your executable files there. Okay, so now it's time to test these tools. Even though you would have tested, let's just do it again. So to test, we can say muscle. And there you have it there. Let me clear the screen. You can also test final. It's also there. Now, if you're having difficulty in running it, even though you have downloaded and extracted the contents into the directory, then you can issue this command as well so that you don't call the four parts when you are running. You can say export path because there are parts, and then you indicate the four parts to your apps. Okay, mine is slash home slash student to slash apps. You can also do it that way. And then once you call it, it will be given to you. Okay, so don't worry. Let's proceed. We will now extract the IPO begin sequence from the six genomes that we have downloaded. And we are going to use a Python script that we downloaded from the GitHub page. So before we even go into, let's quickly look at the script for the extraction. So this is the script. So basically the script has codes that will be used to extract the gene sequence. Okay, so you supply it with a directory which contains the GenBank files and it will do the extraction. I have a separate video on this same activity so you can watch that 
if you want to really understand how these codes work. And I'll leave that link in the description box as well. That video tutorial uses the same genome files we are using as well. Now let's get back to the terminal. The script is located on a desktop. You can just check it out. So there it is. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to run it with Python. Okay. So we are going to call Python, specify the scripts, and then also specify the directory here to get the sequences. And the sequences will be extracted and then placed in this same directory as your GenBank file. So let's do it. So we say Python, then we indicate the paths of the scripts. Mine is on desktop, so it's desktop slash IP origin extractor dot pi. Then I specify the directory, which is also on desktop. So I say desktop slash sequences. Then we run it. So it also indicates the status here for you to know that the gens has been found. Okay, so once it's done, you'll we'll find it in this directory. So let's check it out. So we say ls desktop slash sequences. Notice previously we had only this one showing up, but now we have this showing up. So this contains the sequences for each of these strings. Now to make it simpler, let's just make a copy of this sequence into our current directory. So it becomes cp desktop slash sequences plus IP will be dot faster. Then we paste it in the current directory. Now when we do ls, we'll have it there. So let's just do a quick exploration on that sequence. Oops. Let's indicate when you're using the headers and you need to indicate the number. So let's indicate it. Okay, so we have just this, just one of them. This is the first um, one we downloaded. But if you want to check all of them, we can see grip. Then we have our greater than symbol and then the file name so it gives all of them for you these are the sequences this is a multi faster file so it means it has more than one sequence in it and these are the sequences so now we have it there let's proceed The next thing to do is to perform the sequence alignments. This will be a multiple sequence alignment because we are aligning a couple of the sequences, six of them, and we are going to use muscle for it. So we will do it in two steps. We will first perform the alignment, and then we are going to refine the alignment. So we do it this way. We call muscle, we specify dash in for inputs. Then our multi faster file, which is RP, will be dot faster. Then we specify out dash out. That will be the file name that it will place out. So let's say RPOB dot 
msa.faster. Okay, let's put it that way. So this becomes our output for the multiple sequence alignment. So we run it. Okay, so it's done for us. So let's check it out. Let's do ls. So there we have it. Now we are going to refine this file that has been generated by muscle. So we see muscle that's in. Then we indicate the output file. Uh, the output file for the first step. That's the rpo.msc.faster. That's the multiple alignment file. Then we specify out. That's out. Then we indicate the name for the outputs. Let's just say rpob dot refined dot philip we are using the philip format because final accepts philip format okay so let me just name it well the philip format then we indicate the argument which is to refine then we indicate the format as well which is this one dash i sorry i yes i will leave um, the link to the description box of the manual for the muscle as well so don't worry about it everything will be done for you so this is how we do the refinement okay so now we proceed we run it It has also been done for us. It has been run. Let me clear the screen first. When we do the ls command, we get this file also here. Okay, that is how we do the refinement. Now we are done with the multiple sequence alignments. So we are now going to estimate the maximum likelihood for the journey. We are going to use FIML for that. So this is how we are going to use FIML. The refined Philip file is going to be our input. So we say FIML. That's I. That's for inputs. We specify the Philip file, RPU that's refined. That's the inputs. We also indicate that's D. That's data type. We use NT. By default, final will use NT. Okay, but we just want to specify so that you know how to do it. If it's a protein sequence, it's AA, but we are dealing with a nucleotide sequence. That's why we have NT there. Then we indicate model, that's M, U, T, R. Okay, so the models here are different for the two types of sequences, D, T, R, and then some other ones are appropriate for nucleotide sequences and we also have some for amino acids but we will leave all those ones and use this one so for now just know that DTR model is appropriate for nucleotide sequences then we specify dash O for parameter optimization we will use 
the tree topology branch lengths and then substitution rate parameters as R. Now, if you want to read more about parameter op optimization as well as the models, I'm going to leave some useful links in the description box, including the manual for Phi ML. So don't worry about it. So now we have this done. Please make sure you review your codes to make sure that you have a similar one. Then you run it. So it has been completed. Final is pretty fast. Now we have it there. Let's clear the screen and then check again. Let's do ls. So we are going to find a new file generated, okay, which the names final in them. Yes, I was done. Now this is the phylogenetic tree that has been generated. This is stats that explains the outputs, but our focus for this tutorial is on the tree itself. So we are now going to render this particular file here into an image that we can view. There are various ways to do it. You can even use Python to do that. I have a video on that as well, but we will use the ITOL to do that. So let's use the ITOL to render this file to an image. We are going to use our internet browser. So before we render the phylogenetic tree to an image with ITOL, this is how my file is on my system. I just want to give you the visual of it. So we are going to use this file here. So now let's go to the ITOL page and then continue from there. So this is the ITOL page. That's the interactive tree of life. I am going to leave a link in the description box so that you can use that to also visit this page. Okay, so there we have it. There are other functionalities, but we are focusing on the image. So we will first upload our tree using this button here. There's another one here you can use, but let's just use this one. So you click on it. And then on the next page, you click on browse here. Then you locate your tree. This is the tree. So I'll click on it and open. Then I will click on upload. So we then wait for it to render. So this is it. Now ITOR provides a number of functionalities for you to manipulate the image. Okay, but we are going to take it simple. Notice this dash lines here. Okay, that's the default settings, but we are going to disable it so that you have a full line here. So we go to branch length, we choose ignore. It will give the lines for us. We can also change the line style in terms of the thickness. If you come to line style, you can increase the value here. So notice how it's been done. Now let's return this to its original one, which was one. Okay, so this is how it is. You can also change the tree to the circular format here or unrooted. Okay, but we are going to leave it with the rectangular format here as well. Okay, so now let's interpret the image. So before that, let me enlarge the image here for us. Okay. Now let's minimize the control panel. We do it here. Now let's enlarge this image a bit. Okay, so we have it. For this tutorial, we are going to infer the sequence similarity from this tree. And to do that, we use what you call support values or bootstrap values. 
these values indicate the confidence level for the separation of the sequences. Okay, some of the values will range from 0 to 1, and other methods will use 0 to 100. Okay, final in this case use 0 to 1. Now you'll get the bootstrap values when you hover your mouse on the nodes, such as here, here, and then here. Okay, that's how we do it. In order to infer the sequence similarity, we have to set a threshold. Now the thresholds you set will depend on a number of factors, such as the method you are using, as well as the data. For this tutorial, we are going to use a threshold of 0 0.75. So when we look at this node, for example, the bootstrap value is 0 0.865. This indicates that the sequences here are clearly different from the sequence here and then here, okay? Because we have a high bootstrap value indicating a high confidence of final making this separation. When we come here, bootstrap value is 0 0.958, also indicating that the sequences here are clearly different from the sequence here. Here, the bootstrap value is 0, indicating a low confidence. Okay, so this is how we use these values to infer sequence similarity in phylogenetic trees. So now let's look at how we can download this tree. To our local system. To do that, we go to export. Okay, so here we can select the formats. We have SVG, PDF, PNG, and other formats. So, depending on what you want, you download the appropriate format. I usually prefer the SVG so that I can also edit it, but I'll show you how later on. So, for now, let's download the PDF version. And then the SVG. We will start with the PDF first. So we click on formats, click on PDF, and then we click on full screen. You can also use the screen here, but we will indicate it with a full image. It depends on what you want to do. Okay, so full image here, then we click on export. Then we wait for the server to prompt us to download. Okay, so we are now being prompted to download. So we go to save file and then we click OK. I'll save it on my desktop. It also comes with some default names which we will leave. We save it. That's the PDF. Now let's download the SVG. Go to Format, SVG. Click on Export. Then let's wait for it. We now save it. Also on desktop. Notice the file extension .svg. So we save it. Okay, now let's go and view the files locally. So this is the desktop where I downloaded the files. Let's look at the PDF first. So this is the PDF. You can just open it with your PDF reader and then that's it. But I want to Go into the .svg to show you what I'm talking about, about the editing. With the SVG, which is vector graphics, you can use tools like Inkscape to edit, to open and edit and add some annotations, which is very good if you want to do some publications or you want to do some presentations. So let me show you how. Because I have my Inkscape tool, I can just right click and open it, okay, with Inkscape, and then I have it this way. Okay, so from here, I can edit it. I can even change the line here. If I wanted to change it, I can change it 
and even use a different color. Okay, notice that the color has changed. I can also edit this text here or even replace it with a new one when I come to this interface. Okay, but details for this one will be for another tutorial. Okay, so this is how we do it for the Inkscape as well. Okay, so it has been a good tutorial and I hope you've really enjoyed it and you are going to practice. In later tutorials, I will show you how to also draw the phylogenetic trees using RaxML and then Muscle. Okay, so that will be all for today and thanks for watching this video and I'll see you later. Goodbye.